Am I? Yeah, you are. Oh, sorry. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, yeah, so we have um, uh, just uh, want to give it just another couple minutes. Uh, some of our regulars are not on yet, so we'll go ahead and get uh, rolling in just a minute. But welcome, all of you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm unmuted, and this is my first meetup meeting. Period. So this is this is a good start, I think. Oh, wonderful! Well, listening yeah. to the, so I'm listening to the inspiring part. stories is great. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, that's great. Great. Okay, I'm gonna put myself back on mute. Thank you. Oh, sure, no problem. Thank you so much, Mr. Cohen. And Ellen, I'd like to welcome you. Uh, my name is Dale Campbell. I'm otherwise known as Michael. In the natural health world, I am known as Dale as a health coach. And uh, just really glad to have you on today. Uh, Karen, the same. Thank uh, you. Welcome. And uh, just a real pleasure to have you guys on. Yeah, this is our, I think this is our 68th natural health meetup. Uh, we do it once a month. So we've been around for 68 months. That's better than five years. <laughs> <laughs> of those six years. And um, we transitioned to Zoom back in April of last year. So this makes a year, this is our 12th online natural health meetup. Um, and um, so just uh, happy to share. Our purpose really uh, is just because we love people and we want them to be just as healthy as they can be. So we do this from the, just from the, uh, the passion that drives us from our hearts. Um, just really thinking about how blessed we are to be healthy and how we can even in that be healthier every single day. Uh, <laughs> and that's the challenge that I give myself. What am I doing that will make me healthier, even healthier than I am? My story, um, I'll tell you in just a moment, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about my story when we get started here. I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I, I see... Uh, that our time is going. I'm going to share my screen, pull up a PowerPoint here that should get us going. Not that one. <laughs> but here we are. So this is the Natural Health Learn and Share Meetup of Downers Grove. Uh, today we will be blessed with an informational presentation on fitness at every age, and I threw in stage as well. And uh, this is sponsored by the All Nations Fellowship Seventh-day Adventist Church in Downers Grove. We are, um, uh, one of our services to the community is Community Outreach, Inc. And uh, we're just really thrilled to be able to, in this case, uh, really provide services like this where we're helping people in the community to be better. Uh, we do have uh, a little bit of a protocol. Uh, anything that you're here presenting is primarily educational. We cannot make specific recommendations unless we actually are working with you. Uh, and um, we, if there are any resources that are available or that you discuss, we will make our, do our best effort to get those to you. Our disclaimer is just a little bit more detailed. No medical advice uh, is being provided here today. It is really designed around just uh, giving you information. Please consult with a physician or qualified medical health provider for anything specific that you are attempting to cure or to heal from. And um, we're just really help, very happy, however, to know that there is research in the natural health world that we can refer to. And we're not shy about that, in part because I cured myself of uh, diabetes. This is uh, this coming fall will be 11 years that I am diabetes free. And um, it's just so powerful to know that we do have these available. Uh, even so, I still cannot recommend to you um, the exact same um, protocol because we're not sure that it will work. And that's the, the uh, protocol that we have to follow for this particular venue. Uh, today, we will be blessed with Kelly McGriff Culver. Uh, who will begin our presentation immediately after our prayer. And um, 
I'm going to ask uh, to, um, Kelly to tell a little bit more about herself. As you can see, she is very well qualified, a CrossFit enthusiast in strength conditioning certified, and um, just really uh, um, gets a lot deeper into the biomechanics of strength training. And that's a fascinating field that I would like to know more about as well. And so please uh, let's uh, bow our heads for prayer at this time. Our kind of Heavenly Father, we're just absolutely thankful that we can come together to learn more about our bodies, learn how to take care of them, and learn, Father, from a professional tonight who will be able to teach us many different ideas and skills and resources that will help us to improve our health. May our improved health bring glory to your name. And this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So, Kelly, uh, the floor is yours. I'm going to stop sharing so that you can share. And um, please uh, go right ahead and share your screen and begin your presentation. I was telling Michael that I'm not the most uh, techni technical savvy person here, so <laughs> bear with me a little bit, but um, thank you for having me, Michael. I'm super excited to be here and um, to share with you guys a little bit about myself and then my knowledge that I have um, being in the fitness world now almost 15 years. Um, so a little bit about me and my background. Um, I studied kinesiology and exercise science at Illinois State. Um, I always had a passion for sports and exercise. Um, I played sports in my youth and wanted to carry that into my career by helping people. So um, after college, I got a job in the sports performance world and began working with elite level, elite level athletes um, on strength conditioning, speed training, all the good stuff. Um, but shortly after, um, I became a mom and realized that those night evening hours when you weren't for me trying to raise a family. So um, I went into the corporate wellness world um, and corporate wellness was great. I got to work with a, a lot of people that um, weren't necessarily athletes, which I was used to. So a lot of people that were living sedentary lives um, and introducing them to fitness. Um, briefly, while I was doing corporate wellness, I got introduced to CrossFit and fell in love with it because it was a great combination of still being able to be an athlete, but an ordinary person. Um, so it had a little bit of a competitive edge to it. Um, and um, I started doing CrossFit. And then about a year later, I, uh, me, and my, me and my business partner decided to open up our own facility. So um, fast forward eight years, almost eight years now, um, I've since then bought him out. And now me and my husband um, own our uh, gym, Iron Flag Fitness, in Westmont, Illinois. Um, we're kind of like right nestled in downtown Westmont, um, where we have all different types of services. We've really grown um, into kind of nutrition as well and the sports performance field, um, which my husband Jared runs. Um, so kind of a little bit about me. My main passion now is working with women, um, really trying to empower women and um, show them that you know, strength is just as be strong, is just as beautiful um, as skinny is and what they can do with their bodies and muscles and um, that it should be like a super empowering thing. So um, tonight we're gonna talk a little bit about the benefits of fitness and men and women at life's different stages um, and how men and, women, men and women really vary um, as far as their bodies and what kind of training um, they should be doing in, in different phases of their life here. So um, I kind of wanted to first start off with what is fitness? Um, fitness kind of has a very vague definition, the condition of being physically fit. So what does that really mean? Um, throughout the years, um, we kind of judge that by health and in different um, ways. But um, the owner or the founding CEO of uh, CrossFit came up with a definition that I like to use. So he defines fitness um, in three different standards. The first one is general fitness skills. Um, and that's the one that we're gonna kind of briefly dive into today. today. Um, the second one is the capability of random physical tests. So basically being able to perform better than others when a physical task is assigned to you at random. So 
if your young child gets stuck under a car, can you lift that car off of him? Um, can you run a mile in a great time? Like just different things, um, you know, at random. And last is competency in the three metabolic energy pathways. So how efficiently do you work in short periods of time, mid periods of time and long um, endurance based um, exercises. So just kind of getting into the general um, physical skills first. Um, these are the 10, 10 things that we're going to look at today and kind of talk briefly about. And all of these things are what I would consider to make a well-rounded human or athletes. Every, in CrossFit, we call everybody an athlete. So no matter if you're 30 or 74, you're an athlete because you're there and you're putting in the work. Um, so at different times in life, we may want to focus a little deeper on some areas more than others, but some form of these physical skills should always be present in what you're doing. Um, and then what I really wanna hone in today is strength training is one of the most important things that both men and women should, should really focus on um, if we were to take one out of this 10 um, and really put it to the forefront. So the first one is cardiovascular endurance. Um, so the ability of the body to gather, process, and deliver oxygen. So how well can you get oxygen to your heart, lungs, and muscles over a long period of time, right? So um, we have all runners, bikers, triathletes, um, you know, ultra marathon racers. Um, definitely not me. I'm not an endurance person, but um, you know, there's we have a ton of those kinds of clubs and groups around here that focus in on the the cardiovascular and endurance um, section of fitness. So um, some of the benefits of cardio would be to lower your blood pressure, um, to help like Michael was talking about, um, cure or decrease um, the risk of diabetes and regulating your insulin levels. Um, it also regulates your weight, obviously by burning those calories. Um, it strengthens your immune system and improves your brain power. So it, slows, it actually slows down your brain tissue loss as we age and, and improves your cognitive performance. Um, it can also boost your mood, and then reduce your risk of falls of, um, in older adults. Um, running definitely helps you increase your agility and your balance along the way. So some great benefits there. The next, um, the next topic would be stamina. So stamina is the ability of the body system to process, deliver, store, and utilize energy. So with cardio, we are talking about length, how well you can perform over time. Now we're talking about performing at maximum capacity. Um, so something like one minute max effort push-up test, um, some hit style training, circuit training, maybe you have a barbell and CrossFit we do, Olympic lifting, so clean and jerks. How fast can you do 30 clean and jerks per time? So talking about maximum capacity here with stamina. So slightly different than cardio. Um, and then we have our uh, gold star of the uh, day, strength training. Um, strength training is the ability of a muscular unit to apply force. So can you pick up a weight and apply force with it? Um, the benefits of strength training are, I could probably fill the whole page with them, but just to name a few, um, we're talking about maintaining muscle tissue. Um, so this is gonna be huge as we age. So being able to continue to to increase muscle fiber size and keep your muscle tissue strong. Um, reduced risk of disease such as cancer. So um, a lot of cancer treatments nowadays will actually attack um, your muscles and with a, called muscle wasting. Um, and so having a greater amount of muscle mass um, will in return help fight against that muscle wasting. Um, improved bone health controlled body fat, and your decreased risk of injury because you're strong. So different types of strength training are gonna be um, any sort of weightlifting, um, whether you're picking up a dumbbell or a medicine ball or picking up your child and putting on his, on your back and squatting with him. Um, you also have your traditional um, sports such as powerlifting and Olympic lifting in there. All right, flexibility and mobility. Um, this is, 
super important um, at all ages. Once again, um, we wanna be able to move through full range of motion. So maximizing um, the range of motion at a joint helps us to improve posture, balance, um, less pain, especially as we age, flexibility, we become tighter and stiffer in our muscles. So we wanna make sure we're continuing to push that range of motion in the joint, um, decreased risk of injury. Um, flexibility also helps us with our mental state. A lot of times when we're focusing on flexibility, we're focusing on breathing. So that can help calm and relax um, you as you do this. And then we also have, it improves your physical performance, um, especially athletes. Um, you know, you look at a guy trying to run his fastest 40 yard dash and you're gonna wanna make sure that he's flexible and has that power and knee drive. Um, different types of training that involve flexibility would be yoga, Pilates. Um, Kelly Starlet is one of my favorite PTs in the field right now. Um, he is big on, on movement. So he um, has an app called the Ready State um, which focusing, focuses in a lot on longer holds. But the great thing about it is you can also like put in what you did today. If I, if I worked my legs and my quads are hurting, I can type quads in and it'll, it'll show me a great cool down um, flexibility and mobility program for that. Um, and then Ramwad is another one. All right, power. Um, power is our, I would say, our silver star for the day. It's going to be kind of another thing that I talk about a lot, especially um, when it comes to females here in a little bit. Um, so power has to do with strength, but it's the ability of the muscle to apply maximum force over a minimum time. So we're looking at lower volume, so lower rep scheme, and higher intensity. So by higher intensity, I mean increased weight. Um, so looking at heavy or, or faster um, range of motion and movement. Um, benefits of power training are more resilient connective tissue. So now I'm working to build the muscles to protect my joints. Um, increase lean muscle mass, so burning fat, um, getting more, more lean muscle. Improving dynamic balance, um, especially as we age. Once again, balance is so important. So power training will allow um, you to make those adjustments and um, quickly balance yourself um, during, during those kind of movements. And then enhances aesthetic appearance. Obviously, um, we all wanna be lean. Um, so it always looks better when we have a little bit of lean muscle mass on us. Um, examples of power training and exercise. Um, you know, there's your, you have your Olympic lifts, which are very technical. But then you also have things such as weighted plyometrics, so putting a weighted book back on, book back, backpack on, um, and doing some squat jumps with it um, under a little heavier load, or or doing some weighted box jumps. Anything where you can add a little bit of weight, faster movement, but lower volume. So once again, we're going to work in sets of three to five reps when it comes to power training. Um, next one is speed. Um, speed is the ability to minimize the time cycle of a repetitive movement. Um, so once again, kind of, kind of like going back um, you know, to our HIIT style training, we're looking at how quickly can we get something done in a short amount of time. Um, benefits of speed training would be runner specific benefits. So if you are a marathon runner or if you want to run your first 5K, um, working on speed is very important because you want to be able to have that final kick um, either at the end or um, let's say in the beginning of a race when you really want to want to push your pace there. Um, stronger bones and connective tissue, uh, increase in a anaerobic capacity. So how well can your body work without oxygen um, in that short period of time? Um, also approved agility and balance. Um, so different types of speed training workouts would be once again some plyometric activities. So plyometrics, um, ladder drills, hurdle hops, um, box jumps, things like that where you're working very quick movements. Um, and then anaerobic conditioning. So anything that you're doing in under two minutes and working at a high intensity. Balance. 
Balance is the ability to control the placement of the body center of gravity in relation to its support base. So how well can I control my extremities um, from where my center of gravity is? Um, balance, I can say, is important throughout the lifespan. I mean, we work with kids that are seven on balance. We work with adults that are 65 on balance. So it's something that you can use throughout um, your life and is definitely important. Um, balance prevents us from injuries. Um, it is definitely a use it or lose it. So if you don't work on it, especially as you age, you're going to lose it. Um, it helps you improve your longevity of life. Um, if you think about somebody that's in their 70s or 80s, having that sense of balance is going to help them, um, you know, uh, decrease the risk of falling, possibly breaking a hip or something like that. Um, and then it also improves athletic performance. So once again, those youth athletes being able to, to, to balance their weight from side to side and shift, super important. Um, types of balance training, uh, Tai Chi, super popular, especially as we get a little bit older and yoga as well. And then the last one um, is accuracy. So the ability to control movement in a given direction or given intensity. So we don't talk about accuracy a lot, but it's kind of under the same um, saying as practice makes perfect. Um, you wanna make sure that you are efficiently performing a movement or a sport. Um, so without accuracy, you can't have power, you can't have coordination, you can't have fitness um, because you're not doing it correctly. So benefits of accuracy would be to increase mental focus and brain strength, um, increase performance in sports specific activities, and once again, decrease your risk of injury because you are moving correctly and you've practiced it over and over again. Um, so when I was talking to Michael kind of uh, about some ideas today and, and what the direction we wanted to go, um, I really started to think about um, fitness as we age and how it changes. And then once again, really specifically how it looks women, females to males. Um, and there is a big difference and there's more and more research coming out um, in the effects that women cannot train like men because of the fact that we have difference in our hormone levels and our body changes throughout different ages in life. Um, so we're gonna talk, well, I'm gonna talk briefly about women um, and how um, we should be training and incorporating fitness into our health. And my husband, Jared, is gonna join us and he is gonna talk about men. Say hi, Jared. Hello. <laughs> so Jared just jumped on. He just got home from coaching football. Um, but he's going to talk to you guys. So I figured it would be a nice, nice compliment here. Um, but fitness as we age, um, our why changes as well um, for both men and women, why we want to stay fit and, uh, and, and active. You know, in our youth, maybe it's sport. But as we age, it's to be able to play with our grandkids, to be able to keep up with our kids, um, to increase our longevity of life. And then once again, strength training is key, no matter your age or gender. So guys, um, guys, bear with me on this one. Um, I, you all have some women in your life. So if they're on, not on this call, maybe you can learn a little bit of something today to pass along with them. Um, but my new favorite saying is women are not little men. Um, and there is a new book out called Roar by Stacey Sims. And she talks about this theory that for the longest time, women were treated to train like men. We were supposed to be doing the same type of lifts. Um, we should be performing at the same levels or maybe not performing at the same levels, but there is no sense of difference between how women and men cha uh, train. And the biggest reason that women are not little men is because of our phys physiology. So women have muscle, different muscle fibers, two types of muscle fibers. Here's your type one which are um, all recruited for your longer endurance activities. And then there's your type two, um, which are more power, speed, strength um, type muscle fiber. So women, we got the endurance. So um, against men, we typically can hang um, with them in, in endurance sports um, if we train correctly. Um, we also have more essential fats than men. So we're, a, we're typically in nature a little bit more fatty um, than men are, and that just goes back to we carry babies and our bodies are built for that. Um, so changes over time um, impact women in our physiology 
due to pregnancy, menopause due to um, different hormones. Um, but research has also shown that pound for pound we're as powerful as men if we train to be. So <laughs> to show Jared the research on that one. Um, so strength training in bulk. So I have a lot of um, women that come into the den and they tell them, I don't want to get bulky. I don't want to look like a man. And I tell them, you would need to eat three to 4,000 calories a day, have the genetics, testosterone levels, and train three to four hours to look like that. Um, our, when we train, when we power train, we increase our muscle fibers that are recruited, but our muscles do not typically increase that much in size. So women, strength training is not gonna make you look like a man, I promise. Instead, you're going to look strong, you're going to look lean, strong is the new sexy, um, so that's what we're going for. We want to um, we want to increase our strength to be able to protect our bodies as we age. So moving on, um, I wanted to talk a little bit just in different stages of a woman's life, um, how um, things change and how your training should change. So once again, um, this is kind of, I don't know if it's a taboo subject anymore, but it's something that's not really talked about but periods and performance, so how your menstrual cycle affects your training. So just a quick, once again, guys, bear with me, but ladies, dial in. Um, just a quick overlook of, of your menstrual cycle. So 28 days typically, um, your first two weeks of your menstrual cycle is, is called your follicular phase. Um, scientific term, um, but it starts day one through 14. So it starts with the first day of your period. Um, this is ideally, you may not feel it, but your optimal performance window. So training should feel easier. Um, and during your period, you're at your strongest. Um, then you have days 15 through about 28, and that's your high hormone phase. So these are when your hormones are at their highest. Um, typically, this causes a decrease in reaction time, coordination, it makes you feel groggy, it makes you feel um, maybe not like your, your, your typical self because of those hormones. Um, also, it's, decreases, it's a decrease in blood sugar levels. Um, so once again, you don't quite have that energy. Um, your body stores fat and breathing rates can also be impacted and you may feel a little hotter because of thermal regulation. So let's talk about that first week during your period. So once again, our hormones, estrogen and progesterone are at their lowest. So moderate exercise will help you reduce PMS and any of those symptoms that you may having. This is the ideal time for you to get in fitness. Um, more, than, more specifically than just fitness, this is one we wanna hit it hard. We wanna hit the high intensity and the strength training. This is when you perform most like a man. So if at any point that you're looking to optimize, um, it would be during this phase. Um, moderate exercise will help you also reduce anti-inflammation um, and increase antioxidants um, as well. So after your period, you're gonna move into phase two. Um, this is the first week after your period. So your estrogen begins to rise a little bit, but your pro progesterone are still low. Um, which that estrogen rising actually will help you feel more positive and alert. And estrogen, because we don't have as much, te much testosterone as men, will help you build muscle. So women, we need estrogen to build muscle, all right? And this is one of the peak times that your estrogen is gonna be at its highest. Um, so during training, we want high intensity strength training or superior. Ideally, we want to strength train during this period three times, maybe four times a week, all right? Um, because your, your workouts are gonna be a little bit um, more intense, you want to make sure you have a really good warm up and a really good recovery, all right? Um, there's also a lot of nutrition that goes in with this as well, but it's for another talk, so um, we won't get into the nutrition. You guys will be here all night, um, but that's phase two. Okay, week three. So this is when ovulation starts to occur. Estrogen levels drop off. The pro progesterone um, starts to rise and it remains high. So this is when you start to feel 
not like yourself. So you might see an increase in body temperature. Um, you may have some slight cramping, um, overall mood changes, things like that are happening. So while strength training is still beneficial, this also puts on the table that anything is beneficial. So you really need to consolidate your training. And by consolidate, I mean shorten the amounts of training that you do. Maybe you only strength train one day that week, um, or maybe it's two, depending on how well you feel. But more than anything, this is a great time to work on those skill movements. So to work on, what is it? Seven, eight, nine, and 10 of our um, foundations of fitness. So balance, coordination, accuracy, um, maybe a little power in there, but this is the time we wanna work on it and we wanna provide more recovery for our bodies. All right, lastly, we have week four. This is right before your period hits. This is probably when women feel the worst, right? It's those PMS symptoms. So the mood, the sleep, the stress, your husband hates you, you hate the world. <laughs> you just want everybody to leave you alone, maybe. Uh, this is because your body is having an increase in inflammation. Um, so that's really what's causing. The hormones are declining. The, the inflammation is increasing. Um, you don't have the ability to recover as well. Um, so those hormones really play a nasty role on our bodies during this week. Um, training, any form can be beneficial. I would really um, say that during this week, depending on how you're feeling, I would go with something light to moderate. So we're thinking maybe go for a light run, something that makes you feel good. Maybe it's, it's yoga, maybe working once again on those skill movements like your balance, your flexibility, your coordination, um, some accessory work. So maybe instead of doing you know, a, a compound lift day, like a back squat or um, a shoulder press. Instead, I'm gonna work like some just basic hip bridges or some core work, um, depending on how my core is feeling. So kind of taking it easy, giving yourself a break during this period. All right, your cycle of, of strength. So go with how you feel when it comes to, um, fitness in your childbearing years, it's time to really listen to your body. Um, so take the time when you need it, lift a group A and a group B. And so group A, it was a month, one month study, um, group A lifted every three days. And group, so no matter what, no matter what uh, period cycle they're in or wherever they were at, um, they were lifting every third day. Group B, group B only lifted once during their high hormone phase. Um, and every other day during their low hormone phase. And what they saw was that group B saw a 32% increase in their strength compared to group A, which only had a 13%. So they actually doubled um, compared to group B. So definitely some good um, stuff there. Um, I like to use an app called Fitter Woman to track mine. And what's great about the Fitter Woman app is that you can put you know, the first start day whenever you start and then it'll show you what phase you're in and it'll show you what you should be eating during that phase or what your training should be like. So I know I just threw a lot of sciencey stuff at you, um, but the app will actually do it for you. So there's a couple different apps out there, but that one's called Fitter Woman. Okay, so let's talk a little bit now, um, women that are um, through menopause or maybe you're a little per perimenopausal, so maybe you know, those three years before you hit menopause and then into post menopause. Um, so once again, women, we don't, we don't get to just train the same way for our whole lives. We have to shift our mindset again because our estrogen levels are going to drop and fluctuate um, substantially. So our body composition begins to change. We're like, why am I training the same way, but I'm still gaining all this fat and losing muscle? Um, we have a decrease in collagen. So those connective tissues around the joint um, aren't as strong as they used to be. Um, our bodies are, even though we're still strength training and taking in protein, our bodies now um, are not um, doing, uh, building our protein, doing protein synthesis. So it's not building your, your muscles up at the same rate that your um, muscles are, are breaking down. 
and then skeletal strength. So now, because we are in decreasing in our lean body mass, we're also decreasing in our bone density. Um, so bone density actually declines up to 20% in five to seven years post-menopause. Um, and your strength declines 30% between ages 50 to 70. Um, so training, what you need to do during training phases. Um, we need to engage in some sort of plyometric work because plyometrics is going to give us um, that feedback and increase our bone density by the, and more of an impact um, kind, of, kind of exercise. Um, so doing things such as a low box jump or even like high knees or doing some basic hops on you know, one foot or the other, but trying to engage in some sort of plyometric um, load bearing workouts. Um, we wanna work on balance and core strength. So doing things like Tai Chi, but most importantly, we need to focus on high intensity power training. So power training is what's going to prevent our muscle loss and weakness. Um, and once again, going back to what our power training is, is low volume, but heavy weights. So we really wanna push, and heavy, heavy should mean like, if you're doing 10 reps, rep eight, nine, and 10 is hard. I don't mean you have to throw like tons of weight on the bar and go for a one rep max, but we're trying to make things feel heavy by the end of your set. Um, so you can, as, as we start to age and get a little bit older, I've worked with clients in their 70s and 80s, and we use med balls for this, or we use dumbbells for this. Um, so, so really trying to engage in those, in those lifts is going to only help um, slow down um, that protein breakdown and also increase our bone density. All right, so finally, um, cardio just isn't going to cut it anymore. Um, lean body mass decreases 3% per decade from 30 to 80. So when able to build strength and keep our bodies lean, keep our bodies strong, able and independent, um, we have to engage in strength training and more power training as we get older. Um, after 40, science, research has found that there is not much benefit to aerobic conditioning, so your cardiovascular conditioning, um, when it comes to building lean muscle mass. All right, so now we need to start eating more protein and we need to start start strength training. Um, super interesting, like you don't think at 40, that's when you need to start doing it, but it really is. That's that's one of the ages that we really need to start start learning how to strength train and, and start learning the mechanics and what a program, what a program looks like. Um, also bone density. We just talked about how bone density um, we need strength training for that. Injury prevention, stronger connective tissue. Um, so turning back to our strength training, as we age, we need to lift heavy. So lifting heavy, once again, the last couple reps of your set should feel challenging. If you're just lifting 10 pound weights and you're doing 30 in a row, that's not, that's not heavy. We need, to, we need to make it feel challenging. We need to lift often, all right? So we're trying to lift um, three to four times a week, especially as we get a little bit older into menopause and post-menopause. Um, and then we need to mix it up. So one of the reasons that I love CrossFit, um, obviously I own a CrossFit gym, so you know, I'm gonna plug it a little bit here, but mixing it up, CrossFit is great with mixing it up. So every day is something different. And if we let ourselves become stagnant um, and do the same activities over and over, you're you're going to hit a plateau and you're not going to see that change. So um, making sure that you find a program, um, whether it's a strength program or a high intensity kind of circuit style programming, that they're, they're switching it up every couple of weeks for you. Mm -hmm. Lastly, um, just a reminder that both of these women, you could go either way. So one is, they both are 74. Um, the choice is yours to make. So definitely, uh, definitely start thinking about what your fitness looks like. All right, so I'm gonna let Jared kind of take over here. Um, I've talked enough about women, uh -huh. so he can give the guys here a little bit of a rundown. <laughs> uh, ladies first, right? Ladies first. We're, we're gentlemen here. Yeah. Uh, Welcome, Jared. Welcome, come on. My name is Jared uh, 
McGriff Culver. I am uh, Kelly's husband, but also co-owner with over at Iron Flag Fitness. Um, so talking about the guys on the guy side, um, our forefathers. So what? I didn't talk about your background. Oh, my background? Oh, you didn't say anything about me? I didn't. Sorry. You kind of gloat about me. A um, <laughs> little bit about me. I'm a local kid from Downers Grove. Um, I played football, basketball, and baseball at Downers Grove South. Um, I was blessed to play Division One football at University of Missouri. Um, from there, I had the smallest cup of coffee uh, in the NFL. Um, and from college all the way until now, um, I always wanted to be uh, someone to help someone. Um, I knew I was not going to be a nurse because um, cleaning up after someone wasn't my big, big thing that I wanted to do. Um, being a lawyer or a doctor called for more schooling. Um, if you know about me, me in school was not a, a big plus. Um, and uh, I loved working out. I loved fitness. And so my uh, strength conditioning coach, um, Pat Ivey, was one of my mentors, um, basically steered me into being a trainer. And I've been a trainer for the past 13 years now. So I'm truly blessed to uh, have an awesome facility and fantastic members um, and athletes that we sit there and train. Um, and I'm truly honored and blessed to be on with everyone. So I'm excited um, for this one. Um, ladies, you had your shot. Now I'm talking about the guys. Um, so we're really diving in, going back into history, you know, our forefathers um, and fitness. Uh, if you go back to back into it, uh, it was a lot more outdoorsy work. So farmers, laborers, so steel, coal, more outdoorsy things. Um, it was less than that work week. So there wasn't a whole lot of um, the hours we're seeing now. Um, one, because of technology, we'll talk about that later. Um, it was more, you know, right before sun up and then when sun goes down, you know, we're at home, we're having dinner with the family. Um, and like I said, there's less technology. So it's more outdoorsy things. That's why you see the awesome picture in the back uh, of, of the man. So there's more active, um, more activity. Um, so there's more calorie burn um, for, our, for, about, for, for our forefathers. So if you're thinking about what your grandfather, what your great grandfather did um, when, when you were kids or all those stories you heard about, you know, back in my day, um, those kind of stories, it, it kind of really sets the tone of kind of where we're going, uh, where we're going and where we're at right now uh, for fitness, especially uh, for men. <clears throat> we have finally made technology. All right, so since 2014, um, uh, our life expectancy was dropping. So once 2014 um, hit, so everything changed. So we were kind of like increasing our age. So it was 75, then it was 77, then it was 80. You know, life expectancy was continuing to grow and technology was helping us and, and moving, uh, moving in the right direction. Once 20, 2014 hit, everything began to change. So since 2014, our life expectancy has actually began to drop um, in the United States, especially for men. Um, even though we have more gyms, there's more, more, more information out there, there's better, te better technology, there is no magic pill, um, but there's better technology out there to really help us really stay in shape. And so why is that? Um, and so some, uh, are, so we're big, bigger than ever, um, and it's starting at a younger age, and it's continuing to sit and grow. And so how can we sit there and change that? All right. Um, so it's the lack of exercise. And so technology has happened for us where the work week has gotten longer. The work day has gotten longer. Um, we all have had it where we kind of go home and we're still, you know, doing work things. Um, when the sun kind of goes down or, or that, that bell or buzzer would end uh, for that work day back with our grandfathers, our great grandfathers, you know, the, the day ended and they were doing uh, fatherly duties. They were playing catch in the yard. They were fixing things in the garage. They were just being more active um, back in the day. And now it's it's kind of always been a lot more of a work, work, work kind of thought process. And some of that has fall, fallen on the men when they're at home, they're still having to be thinking about work um, instead of just being, you know, husbands, fathers, um, boyfriends, friends, whatever it is, and, and just being an active lifestyle and having a good time. Um, so it's caused to high blood pressure, poor digestion, poor bone density, slow metabolism, um, and the list go on, like high body fat, um, erectile dysfunction, we'll talk about that very, very soon, um, poor sleep, and then high uh, depression and, and poor memory recall. So lack of exercise, lack of fitness, um, leads to all of these things. And so if you really take a true self-portrait of, of, of yourself, um, you can kind of see and pick holes of where you're at. And for me speaking, and my wife is right here, she'll probably laugh at it, um, mine is the poor sleep. Um, when I don't have lack of probably four hours, five hours of, of good sleep, not just laying in bed, tossing around, 
Um, it affects my next day and so far and so, so on and so forth to the point where my body fat increases, which mm -hmm. you see there, or my mood. Um, uh, I've, I've, I've very, sometimes I can get high temper. Um, so, um, and it usually comes from the lack of sleep. And so when you add all those together, um, if you're looking at where's my fitness level at, it kind of ties into everything where everyone has all, has probably gotten that great workout in. It could be for 30 minutes to an hour, two hours, whatever it is you're at the gym. Um, that leads into an improved day. If you wake up and you get a great workout in, you know your day's set and you kind of go through the day where things kind of roll off your shoulders. And fitness does that for you. It sets the different serotonin levels to really help you take on take on the different challenges you sit that you sit there and face. If you work out at nighttime, um, the same thing happens, just a little bit in reverse. So that rough day might hit you. You know you have that awesome workout at the end of the day. Um, and so it kind of helps you reset and recalibrate and you end up going to bed and feeling pretty good. So that fitness, that workout for the day really sets the tone of how things really works out for you in a day. It's a big thing. <clears throat> so exercise for men, as you increase in age, helps fight erectile dysfunction, um, stroke, cancer, especially uh, colon cancer, um, heart disease, and even Alzheimer's. So if you have a lack of exercise, um, your doctor can either, one, prescribe you different medication, um, two, um, some doctors start telling you get, get awesome exercise in there. Um, and so these things really set a tone for, if, if you, if hopefully you do get your, your you know, yearly checkups, but um, you see a different side of, of popping up. So those, those illnesses that pop up, that all stems from lack of, lack of exercise. Um, so we're, we're missing we're missing that 30 minutes a day, and that's all it really means, your, your 30 minutes of, of good activity a day. Um, you start looking into those internal diseases that really starts to shorten our lifespan. And we get back to that lifespan, the, the life expectancy where it drops with exercises decreases. So always try to find time in your day to spend 30 minutes. It could be a brisk walk. It could be an awesome um, EMOM. EMOM stands for every minute on a minute where you're doing something for 30 minutes. Um, or it could be outside and run around playing tag with your kids. Um, for me personally, if I miss a workout, um, I try and do something active. Um, we have a trampoline in the back. I hate the trampoline, by the way. Um, so I try and do something active for 30 minutes to get that activity level up there. Um, so I'm always kind of getting my fitness up there. So it's something that to really look in mind that some people think that, you know, I have to work out for an hour and a half to two hours. You really don't. Um, the CDC and Harvard sit there and said, you just all you need is 30 minutes. You're looking for 30 minutes a day. So it adds up to be right around two and a half hours that week where you're actually gonna sit there and be extending your life. So just aim for 30 minutes a day and then you're, you're, you're hitting that marker very, very well. All right, um, and then a Harvard study linked uh, men who really uh, regularly exercise gain about two years um, of their life expectancy. So, if you start now and you're 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 getting you're continuing to get your 30 minutes a day, you're gonna see like not just your body change because you you'll see the physical changes on the outwards, but inwardly you'll begin to change. You'll start to feel a little bit better, um, and those those different checkups are, will start becoming more positive with your doctor. And it's, it's just the simple, small things of exercising 30 minutes a day. <laughs> so what should you be doing, okay? Um, the first thing is make it fun. Um, so Harvard, the CDC, um, and Yale all did a study um, three years ago. And the main corporate of exercising is, it was no longer fun. Um, it was more like a chore, it was more like a responsibility. Um, like I said, you don't have to be in the gym to hit that 30 minutes. Playing tag, playing basketball, playing football, um, like touch football. No, doing anything to kind of increase that heart rate for that 30 minute threshold will sit there and 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 hit that marker, right? Um, like younger kids, if they do that good thing, all of a sudden they get that gold star for the day. So if you're looking for that gold star marker, um, or if you have an Apple Watch where it says exercise is done. Um, doing something for 30 minutes to kind of increase that heart rate, anything that's in your mind that you enjoy. Um, I have a buddy who loves go-karting. Um, he lives down south, so it's a little bit warmer. He go-karts at a really, he, it's 45 miles per hour, and it's really intense. His heart rate spiked up, and he actually hits 
your friends on, on Apple, um, he actually hits this exercise from the go-kart. Now, I've never driven a go-kart that fast before, so I have no idea how it works, but it's for him, it's fun, and he has a blast doing it. Now, mix it up. So if you're someone who, you know, you might be in a CrossFit gym with us, and so you're doing something every uh, different every single day. Um, you might be at one of the, the, the big market gyms, like the Lifetime or the Planet Fitness, or over here is the Evolve, yeah, is the Evolve Fitness. Um, so you might be there two days a week. You might be hiking or, or, or walking one day a week. Completely mixing it up. Um, we'll kind of keep want to keep you on a positive rate where you're not getting in, in a steady state where you're, you're kind of getting the rut. Um, and the nutrition is very, very crucial. Um, at Iron Flag Fitness, we preach moderation. Um, so that means it's okay to have a cookie or two. Um, just <laughs> here two every single day. Um, and that goes a long way. We're not saying uh, no one here is trying to be uh, the world's fittest or diff another Arnold Schwarzenegger, because that's a different conversation, different topic. Um, but moderation is very key. Um, if you're working out for 30 minutes, what you're putting in matters. Um, so take that consideration. A little more lean protein, focusing on the fruits and vegetables, um, and, and then hydrating very well with water. Um, the, the wine or the whiskey, uh, keep that, you know, at like a couple shot minimum, guys, hopefully. Um, every once in a while, or the beers, you know, have one or two, a six pack, mm, kind of rough a day. Um, and all it takes is 30 minutes a day. Like I said, 30 minutes a day really makes a huge difference. Guys, we're a lot easier than women. Um, like Kelly said, the Book of Roar has really changed my thought process and how we train and coach our women, um, and it's helped a long way. Uh, and I, I'm not really jealous because, you know, it's pretty cool being a guy, um, but we're a lot easier. We can, we can really focus in and hold in on the things that kind of make it very simple for us. Um, and then I highly recommend, you know, sometimes turning off the phone or putting on Do Not Disturb goes a long way um, to that health factor of increasing uh, the life expectancy. So. You know, when you get home a little bit, work for an hour or two, or turn off and have some fun, um, and that eases a lot of the stressors that, that goes along um, with the different bad side effects when we're not working out as, as we think we should. All right, so that is it for our uh, portion. We would love to, I don't know, Michael, how if you would save questions to the end or whatever, <laughs> but um, this is our emails. Um, if you have any questions about what we talked about, um, ladies, if you need any help designing a program for you, I would love to help you with that or to talk the nutrition side of it as well. Um, but there's all of our handles on Facebook and Instagram. Um, feel free to follow us, but thanks for having us. Yeah, fantastic. So thank you guys so much for, this was great information. We're going to actually uh, have questions and answers uh, a, a little bit few minutes in a few minutes but I did want to do something I actually forgot to do something earlier and we're going to have another short presentation in just a moment um, and if you guys could stop sharing your screen for just a second and we can put that back up closer to the end thank you so much um, and I did want to say that as natural health enthusiasts uh, one of the things that we really do is we're, we're hardliners here, Jared, uh, in terms of nutrition. Not that everybody is, but we try to steer people that way. <laughs> and uh, we know the devastation that sugar does to our diet and, and, and also alcohol as well. And just really, um, you know, looking at the, the opportunities to keep growing and getting better along the path toward these purest type of approaches. Uh, but thank you, this was awesome. I, I, I learned so much from this presentation. I, I do have a poll that I would like, and those of you who are online, uh, a poll is gonna come up. We're gonna have just four questions before we have our second presenter who is just gonna give a, a kind of a case study as to how the benefits of exercise actually do really help. And um, so, uh, but we're gonna do a poll here and um, it's going to come up. I'm going to launch the polling, and um, you'll have a chance to answer these questions. These will be anonymous. These will be anonymous. And so your name will not be attached in any way to the responses. We'll just gather the data, and I'll give you the correct answers. And this shouldn't take us more than about two or three minutes. 
So I'm going to launch the poll so you should see it come up. And uh, do you see the poll? Yes. yes. Okay, very good. So no pain, no gain relating to exercise on long-term fitness. Is that a true statement or a false statement? All right, the second one, fitness can best be determined by which of the following? Endurance of exercise time, intensity of exercise, or recovery time after exertion. And third question is, research shows that for average people at age 50, there's about how much loss in lung capacity. With a fitness plan, lung capacity can be restored up to 100% at any time. So this is what uh, Kelly and Jared were teaching us how to go about that. But what is the lung capacity uh, loss at the age of 50? What do you guys think it is? 60%, 40%, or 50%? And the last question is a little bit more uh, involved, but I'd love for you to answer it. One of the types of exercise that we all know about is high intensity interval training. Uh, which one of these reasons do you like best that makes this exercise so valuable? You like just the fact that you get an extra dose of that youthfulness hormone and that it lasts up to 24 hours in the body when you do a workout? Or do you like that it significantly reduces chronic inflammation from the entire body? <laughs> All right, I see the answers coming in. <laughs> All right, so we have uh, very nice, very, very nice. All right, so keep answering those. Uh, we have a few people that haven't responded yet, but we'll see how that goes. Maybe not everybody has access to this but really appreciate the participation here. And let's see what the results are. So the, the correct answer to the first one, it is true. Yes, no pain, uh, no gain. We gotta work, we gotta do something. <laughs> All right, it doesn't have to be painful, but we have to put some discipline into it, right? <laughs> All right, and so depending on how you interpreted the question, then that could be one reason why you chose the false. Now, fitness can be best determined by which of the following? Yes, absolutely. Recovery time after exertion. That's one of the best ways to know if indeed you are fit. And um, research shows that for the average per, per, uh, people, age of 50, it is 40%. 40% is what the research is showing right now at the age of 50. And when you get to 80, if you're not doing anything about it, it's a 60% loss in lung capacity. And um, yes, well, any one of these you like. Is <laughs> All right, I like the youthfulness part. I really felt, you know, energized when I realized exercise releases that youthfulness hormone, the HGH, and it, it lasts quite a few hours, a whole day. So when you give yourself a hit, you know, that 30 minute hit that Garrett just talked about every single day, you keep producing more and more of that youthfulness and vigor. So thank you guys for participating. So now we're about uh, to hear from Donald Hall, who uh, just really uh, has done some phenomenal things in his life. And he's prepared to share here for us in just a few minutes. And Don, you have just about uh, 10 minutes. Okay, I think I may be way shorter than that because okay. Such a good job, and like he basically gave my routine in his presentation. <laughs> you know, hey, I guess I'm really on the good track, and I guess that's why I saw all the benefit that I did. So to make good a, a good story good, uh, last year this time, today's what day? The 13th of April. On the 15th of April, 2020. I was 290 pounds. Last year, this time, 290 pounds. 
after we went into the lockdown with Corona, I was like, this is not gonna be good. Of course, everybody have their New Year's resolution, want to lose weight, everything you have the year. I was going to the gym up to that point and then everything shut down. I was like, I was scared because I was like, at 290 pounds with a virus, if I catch this, I may not be in a good point, a place. So I decided that I was gonna like really, I was at home, I wasn't working as much. So I had a little bit of time to really focus on fitness. So to make a long story short, as of this morning, I am 189 pounds. So that put me at about 100 and about 10 pounds. And at my lowest, I was 170. Two. Wow. So, and basically all I did was, as Jared was saying just a while ago, include at least 30 minutes of activity throughout my day and making sure that my nutrition was in check every single day. And because of that, I realized that the nutritional part of it, I think, was a very important part. And it's kind of hard to talk about fitness and not talk about the nutritional aspect. <laughs> it's kind of counterproductive if you are trying to be active and you're not necessarily taking heed with your nutrition because it can really none and void all the effort that you're putting in with your exercise routine. So I realized that during that time of working out, I was also doing intermittent fasting. And to be honest, I think that fasting aspect of it was what really contributed to uh, my results. Because when I started intermittent fasting, especially at the beginning, the weight was like dropping off. I was talking like seven, eight pounds a week dropping off. And that happened for like two, three months. My wife looked at me the other day and she was like, I feel like I am cheesing. You're not the guy I'm married to. <laughs> so she was like, yeah. So, she, so we're really loving the benefits. So, but I realized, as I was saying just a while ago, the nutritional part of it is very important because what that does, it helps you to maintain whatever gains you have made. And for me, what I realized that worked best for me, and Jared said it just now in his presentation as well, is sticking mostly to the veggies and the fruits. And that for me, taken me a very long way in making sure that I'm maintaining uh, my gains. And of course, uh, you know, sticking with mostly a plant-based diet, and I know I'm back into the gym trying to build muscles now, uh, I have to supplement with protein because I'm not necessarily taking my protein source from meat or fish. So I supplement with uh, about 60 grams of protein daily, and I keep my fat minimum to about 30 to 50 grams a day. So yeah, that has been my experience. I work out currently uh, <laughs> five days a week, uh, strength training. And as Jared said just now, I, I walk about 30 to 40 minutes at minimum per day, every day. I don't care what's going on in the cold. It doesn't matter. I am out. If it's at 12 o'clock at night and I look at my watch and I haven't met my step requirements for the day. I'm going to go out and get that walk in before I go to bed that night. So uh, all the benefits of, of living this healthy lifestyle is very profound for us men. Um, I felt I'm feeling so much more better as a man, you know, having that clear mind, being focused, you know, having that sense of confidence about myself not only by losing the weight, but knowing that, you know, when I enter the room, I'm not the biggest guy in the room anymore. So that sense of confidence that comes from that as well is super important for us as men. And just knowing confidently within yourself that you're doing something that best aids you and your family, you will be able to see your, your kids grow, your grandkids grow and be able to, to rock with them as they grow. And the, the, the flexibility of that is good enough for me. So I'm just imploring everybody on the uh, on this meetup this evening to at least get 30 minutes of active exercise daily. 30 minutes. 
a walk, a slight drag, jag. Uh, uh, if you're able to do uh, at a higher intensity, high intense hit cardio or something like that, every day it keeps your heart pumping and it keeps you young and it keeps you away from the doctor. So, and, and that is very important because we're living in a society that we're very, we're very stationary. Like we're very, we, 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 we stick. I know for me, I'm behind a computer at least <laughs> my job. I'm, I'm behind a computer screen eight, nine hours a day. So if I don't keep an active lifestyle outside behind my desk, my, all my gains will be none and void. So. We have to know our environment knows our trigger and, you know, don't allow those situations to, to, to affect us in the end. Uh, one of the big things that I do realize, though, that in order to make uh, this a lifestyle, we first have to own it and grasp it, you know. Uh, behavioral modification is a very big aspect of this. We have to decide, we have to purpose in our heart that this is what we really want to do want to be healthy we want to be active if you don't make that commitment to yourself it will never happen it will never happen so i'm just imploring everyone in the group just to be active you know my my slogan for this year is fit 21 21 is my year of becoming the fittest version of donald so yeah that's my, that's my contribution to this conversation fantastic thank you so very much don uh, that was very inspiring. And so we've had two inspiring uh, presentations today, actually three, uh, from Kelly and Jared and, and, and Don. And I know that there are perhaps some questions that you would like to entertain. You can put them in chat. You can unmute yourself and come on and we'll recognize you. Uh, we do really want you to get your questions answered. And uh, so please um, feel free to unmute yourselves and come on. Who wants to go first? So, Kelly, I wanted to ask you a question because, um, you know, I just turned 61 and um, we gained a lot of weight over the COVID. I call it the COVID fatties. <laughs> um, um, so we started walking and we've been discussing how we can cross train and I'm really happy that this came up because we were thinking about weights. My husband is 64, I'm 61. So how would, what is your recommendation? Like I wanted to get like um, little dumbbells because I used to a long time ago in my twenties um, to, um, used to, uh, I took a weight training class in college, okay? And so that was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed that. And it wasn't, um, it wasn't to get bulky because it wasn't for bulk. It was more for contour, right? So how do we go back into that? My husband and I, how do we do that? I, I don't wanna, cause it's gonna be painful. So how do we begin? It's so it's not so painful. <laughs> Yeah, so, so are you guys doing um, fitness from home? Right. Okay, okay, so you're looking at buying some dumbbells or a kettlebell or something for a home gym. Right. So more than anything, do you remember some of the basics of the strength training that you were doing back in college when it comes to like technique and form and things like that? Uh, I could, I, yeah, probably, yeah. Okay, because that's going to be your number one thing. Like, you want to make sure that you're doing it right first. So I would suggest if, if you don't have a program or something to follow, because you're going to want something that gives you, you know, this is how many reps you should do of this, or, um, like, you know, something that, that is foundational and moves you in the right direction. Um, so you could find... Um, maybe an, an app that you could use. Um, Jared, do you have some good ones that, that we, we use Trainerize. We have an app called Trainerize where we program for people. Um, and it's super, yeah, and it's super cheap. And so like you can just follow and it has videos. I would find some sort of online either trainer or something that you can follow that's gonna show you a video of the movement and have like a, a progression for you. Um, I don't know if after, 
Christy, you said you were in college, so maybe after 40 years of starting something of your own um, would be ideal. I mean, definitely start basics, but try to educate yourself. There's, there's YouTube videos, there's different things. I can connect with you and send you some things um, for sure, but start, start basic, start light, make sure that you get your technique first. Um, Cause the last thing you want to do is like, Enjoy yourself. Wondering, so, so, since we're walking like every day, we're, yeah. we're doing about you know three miles. Sure. So, and it's not a really, um, it's not really like, you know, before I used to run five miles a day, you right? Know, Ten miles a day, but now you know, bad knees, age, and everything else. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. now, so now we're walking, and um, so. Like, should it be like every other day walking and then maybe cross training with like upper and then maybe lower on another day? Is that still viable? I mean, I don't know. I, mean, I would, what I would suggest is if you have the time, um, you could either do one of two things. You could combine like 20 minutes of strength training with your walking a day. And if you do, or not even a day, I would say maybe four times a week. But I would try to maybe like do an every other day thing where you're still working full body. Like I think the days of just doing upper body one day, lower body the other day, unless you're doing strength training every day are kind of over with. Okay. You're okay. doing compound mo movement. So maybe like a squat with a press or something like that where you're utilizing full body techniques and not just something that's like a bicep curl. Does that make sense? You want to utilize your whole body. I just have, a, I've got my right knee, it's like, it's gone. It's yeah. Like, yeah, so that's where the technique is really going to have to come into play. For the life of me anymore. Sure. Uh, maybe side, side ones, maybe. I mean. You could, uh, what was your name again? I'm sorry. Mary. It's Mary. Mary. <laughs> Mary, you could, so you squat in daily life. You can end on a chair, right? Yeah. yeah, and out of your car. So you could squat to a target. Maybe you find um, a higher chair or bench, something that you could work on sitting to that's not so deep into that squat that cause you pain. Yeah. Um, yeah, so different things like that. You're definitely going to have to make modifications based on, you know, some joint pain. But I think once you start to strengthen that joint, you're going to see some of that pain to subside for okay. sure. Okay, thank you so much, Kelly. Yeah, feel free to drop your email if you want to um, chat it to me and I can send you some things too. All right, perfect. Excellent. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next question. Looks like we got him. We put him on mute. Any questions uh, for either of our three presenters? I heard someone talking. Is it? Uh, yes. Someone? Okay. Um, I guess um, I'm almost 50. And uh, the main thing is I, I have to be conscious of rest and not getting hurt. And God put me out. I've been hurt before with, you know, I didn't pay attention to nutrition. And I was only, you know, I had the, during lifetime, I had the trainers and they had me lift. And it was great, but then I'd overdo it and get hurt, and then I'd be out for like three months and go all the way. Hmm. That was no good. So, how do you guys uh, manage injuries and uh, middle age? Um, I think the the first part is, uh, like Donald said, is, is the the behavioral modification. Um, a lot of people come in our gym, and even though we do CrossFit, the stigma of CrossFit is, is very intense. Um, and we tell, especially the men to, you know, check the egos at the door when they first come in. Um, we just finished with a, with an older gentleman um, who's in his mid forties, who used to be a division one athlete. Um, in his first workout, he didn't pass out, but he got really lightheaded. Um, and it happens quite often, especially with our men, because, you know, the, the Montezo, the, the ego, of things kind of get going and, and it's a little bit competitive atmosphere. Um, and so we tell a lot of people to uh, let's crawl before we walk. Um, so understanding that um, more sets, lighter weight, higher reps um, is always gonna be beneficial um, moving forward. 
because at the end of the day, it's not about the next day or three months from now. It's it's about the thirty years um, that you that you're having. Like you said, you're 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 in your fifties, correct? So you know, it's about what happens when you're when you're eighty, when you're ninety. So we're we're preparing for that, and we're working towards that. And along the way, we're going to hit milestones. So um, we do a great job. Um, I believe we do a great job of slowly pushing people along to the point where um, they are they're a little hesitant to move forward with weights, like getting heavier, um, but we give them that little, you know, two finger push um, to the point where it's like, if you're moving correctly, your technique is looking awesome. Um, let's slowly increase the weight um, and see how the, the technique looks. Um, and that's a lot of things we tell people that, you know, if the technique doesn't look right, we'll never increase your weight um, or increase the movement. Um, so if, if you're back at a, at a light time or if you're at home, um, Using, using a phone or a laptop to videotape yourself um, to see how you're moving. Um, guys, that's the only true way to gauge, you know, should you increase your weight or do a harder movement. How, Winslow, were you working also on your mobility and flexibility when you injured? Um, that was, so that's talking about six years ago. So um, let me think. No, not that much. I didn't yeah, stretch out. Really now well. I do because I learned. I got <laughs> out of shape like uh, Donald. I was like uh, about July. I was two fifty, and I'm now one sixty. Wow! And uh, I reduced my. I, I worked for a few first few months. I just worked on my core, um, and my hip was crap. And I got that fixed. And by my just watching like uh, Athlete X. I also like went back when uh, you were. Talking about Kelly Starlet, I have I, back then I was yeah into that too. That Kelly Starlet, that uh, supple leopard. So maybe I was into like foam foam rolling and stretching. No foam rolling and uh, massages back then, but not, I didn't start yoga until like this year, and uh, that's been awesome as far as making me more like I I, I would definitely pay attention to uh, mobility, and I also like I've been motivating my mom, which is seventy right now and uh i she, so she's passed you know the post-menstrual thing so i'm glad you talked about that i don't know how i'm going to ever make her do more than five pound dumbbells um i don't think that's going to be possible um but i'll tell her you said this and maybe i'll buy her that book but you that i have to write that down um it's more yeah okay um, so for your mom, if she refuses to get rid of the fives, my suggestion would be to have her lift lower. So have her instead maybe like do like a 10 seconds up, 10 seconds down. So um, more time under tension okay. will increase strength or higher repetitions. Um, I know that sometimes the fives are hard to lose. And sometimes you just don't have anything else. Like when we did all... We have a master's program for people that are 50 and older, and we did a Zoom um, for mm -hmm. them. Doing it, still doing it back in the gym. Um, but a lot of times, that's all they have to get from five to 10. So increasing that slower lift will really help have a better burn and build some strength. Um, but Winslow, it sounds like you're in a really good place to start the training now that you've started incorporating yoga and some other things. I do. And, yeah. I do. Good, good. I think that your body would really see some great benefits. <laughs> wow. This is so awesome, guys. Uh, this is uh, just fantastic. The energy that's uh, prevailing here in this in this uh, meetup. Um, we're, I'm, in, I'm getting inspired. Uh, you know, my, 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 uh, I don't want to put the wrong adjective here, but I'll just say my story is that I was training last year. Uh, to climb the Blue Mountain Range in Jamaica. And uh, we actually went to Jamaica. We in incorporated the trip for the wedding that we were attending down there. And uh, because of the COVID crisis, uh, they, the guys that were to take us up refused to take anybody who came from the United States. So they were so concerned. This was like late March, like the mid, mid March 16 or 17. And uh, and since I came back, <clears throat> I haven't done anything. <laughs> it's been about a year. <laughs> so, 
So, and I, I actually injured myself getting back into it just a couple of weeks ago. And uh, so I'm re I've recovered from that pretty nicely now, but I am definitely inspired by this. <laughs> Thank you guys for just uh, crafting the language and making it seem just as important as it really is. Yes, Michael, please. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, first of all, I want to thank um, I want to thank everybody. It's been an excellent, excellent meeting. I've learned a lot. Um, but I have a couple questions, so I'm going to uh, direct my first question over to our our couple. Um, actually, there was something said about sleep. My hours of sleep are divided. And that's because I have, I'm an insomnia. Uh, if we have a parrot in our kitchen, and if that parrot sneezes, I wake up. That's how delicate my sleep is. And just as everything else, what you do the day before or the day before that affects the following day. So if my, um, if my sleep is interrupted and it's so easily interrupted, then then I'm not that I'm not that good the next day. And I just turned 64 and the pandemic left another 25 pounds on me. And so for the last two weeks, we have been diligent. We have been knocking out three miles or more every day, which has helped my sleep. But I want to ask you, what do you do? Thanks, Dad. What do you the question for you is next? What do you do to help? your sleep along. I, I noticed you said you, you can get up to four or five hours solid sleep. Is that what your DJ said? And he's, I'm the, I sleep like a rock. Jared's, <laughs> Jared is not a good sleeper. <laughs> um, so I've, uh, my entire life, I've never got a whole lot of sleep. That's probably why I stopped growing. Um, <laughs> at 60. Um, but, but for me, tr truly, honestly, um, so this Christmas, was it Christmas or your birthday? So uh, it could have been as Christmas. Um, I uh, Kelly wanted the uh, device called the Whoop. Um, the Whoop measures activity, stress levels, sleep, all this kind of stuff. Um, and I had it previously when it first came out, but it was too expensive, so I stopped. Um, and now they've made it a very more, more affordable for the for the general public. So uh, we both have one. Um, and she laughs at the time because she's like. You slept for three hours, or you slept for four hours, or you slept for five hours, or you know, if I sleep for seven, I don't know how or why. The next day, I'm I'm not good. Um, but for me, it's the quality of sleep. So I realize even if I sleep for five hours, if, if I get a good REM and deep sleep, um, let's say an hour and a half, two hours, three hours of that deep sleep, um, I'm you know I'm my normal self, um, and it really comes back to you know, what I did that previous day. If I, um, like I said earlier, I, I try to do something active. Um, the past three weeks, I've really um, got back into what I did as a kid, what, what my dad forced me to do was like push-ups and sit-ups at night um, to really just kind of get more exertion out um, to get myself a little bit more tired. So um, for a lot of people, for a lot of my athletes that I have um, that are co collegiate and pro, they use the evening time to like foam roll and stretch. And that really kind of sets um, the natural melatonin uh, in their body into the, that, that let me just relax mode. Um, for me, if I stretch, I get even tighter. And so I don't, <laughs> I'm not going to sleep. Um, so I have to do some kind of uh, strength or strenuous activity um, to kind of set that into motion. So everyone's different. So um, but Kelly might do a, you know, a glass of wine. Um, um, might do a glass of wine to calm down and relax. That's but fantastic and great. Um, we're holistic for me, on <laughs> Yes, for me, it's I, I, I might do a couple sets of push-ups and sit-ups to kind of really um, get my body uh, in, into that little bit of stress movement so it increases, and then all of a sudden, my, I just end up relaxing in, into a sleep. So um, hopefully, I'm asleep before she comes upstairs. That's a good sign. Um, if not, I'm awake all night. I also think that for me, if I, I set my phone like away from me, I feel like the like tech technology and constant like um, stimulation of electronics definitely affects my sleep. Yeah. So 
I don't know if you, Michael, if you sleep, if, if you check your phone before you go to bed or if you look. Yeah. Yeah. So if I set my, I actually charged, I for a long time just charged my phone in the bathroom over at night, like 30 minutes before bed, I would put it in the bathroom and not, and not even put it by my bed and I would get way better sleep that way. Yeah, so Kelly does that. Um, I downloaded an app um, that kind of like turns like all the bright lights off my phone because um, my phone's my alarm clock. Um, so unless, um, yeah. unless you have like a, another alarm clock in, in your room, that it's, it's my alarm clock. I know it wakes me up um, on time. Um, I highly recommend uh, either, you know, having something where, where all the stress lights on your phone or your TV um, is turned off. Kelly turns off the TV for us 99% of the nights. So our room's completely black. Um, so it, it's, it's improved my sleep quality. Um, I still don't sleep long, but the quality of sleep is very important. And so you can really look into, um, like, like Luke does an awesome job of showing you, hey, you're in bed for 10 hours. And it's like, you're in bed for 10 hours, but of those 10 hours, you got one hour of deep sleep. You might have been hours yeah. you know you still might have a a rough day the next day so it's helped us as business owners as couples um like married couples to understand like okay she's a little bit like irritable today she slept long but she didn't sleep well um mm -hmm. you know looking into those kind of devices also helps um i mean and the, and the helps goes a long way when, we, when we're talking about sleep um but the first step would be um to minimize the technology in your room um, and that's probably a different conversation for a different day because I've read up on it because she, our, she's my rock. She's everything. So she tells me stuff. And if you read up on it, talking about the different gamma rays and all that stuff that comes off phones and TVs lights. and blue lights, blue light, yep. you'll be, you'll be amazed. And for me, I, I'm, I'm kind of stubborn. No, I am stubborn. So, um, it's, it's helped me realize and see different things. Um, to kind of really help me along the way. You know, one more question. I, I forgot I wanted to ask this. Yeah, we, we're a little bit over time, so. Okay, you know what? I can, I can let it go. So, uh, you can, go, go ahead for it. I think we're good for it. Just go ahead and, and just so that you know we, we, we're, we're up against the time. All right. I wanted to ask John about the intermittent fasting. And do you do that like, it's not a whole day. I mean, is it like a whole day or, uh, current, or, or, you know, just water, right? So I started off with water, but now that I get to, I've gotten to my ideal and it's just a matter of maintaining, I would probably do like a 16, eight, three times a week. That's 16 hours of fasting and eight hours of meal time. Yeah. yeah. What does fasting, what does fasting include or exclude? Everything that's food, right? Yeah. When I'm fasting, like within those, without, within those, uh, within those 16 hours, if I'm up within those 16 hours when I'm fasting, it's generally just water that I take in within that time. And then I'll break my fast with a high protein shake or something like that, uh, not to get my uh, insulin level all over the place. And then I just eat regularly after that. Yeah, yeah we've, been, we've been doing that mostly here for about uh, six, six or eight weeks now, and it really works. Yeah. Well, folks, I want to thank everyone for coming out. Our time is up. You guys have have a great time. Just give us the handshake. Uh, give us a shout. Turn the mics on, and let's uh, give a wonderful thank you to our presenters today. This was an incredible time. Uh, for those of you who might be wondering, if you do have questions, I'm going to put a link in the chat window. Uh, it is just a way to stay connected with us. Uh, there's a Facebook page. There's a natural health meetup. Uh, and it will just give you an opportunity to come back and ask questions. The video of this presentation is in our Facebook group. So if you did go there uh, and wanted to review any of this, that video is right there. And you'll be able to do that. But this link will give you access to all of those sites. And for those of you who would be requesting prayer for any reason, 
please know that we have uh, groups of uh, people that are constantly praying for different needs, and please feel free to even make that request. And Michael, would you mind closing us out with prayer? Absolutely. All right, thank you. Heavenly Father, thank you again for another health meetup, for the information, for the camaraderie that we share. There's so much to learn, Lord, and you have put so much out there for us to do things naturally. Please keep us searching for these things. And let us see our results and let us be an inspiration and a ray of hope to each other. In Jesus' name I pray these things. Amen. 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 Thank you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, next month, our meetup is going to be about air the importance of oxygenating and being careful about the quality of air in our environment. So, yeah, so that will be uh, our next uh, meetup as part of the eight laws of health. Yeah, Dr. Junta. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Junta, Dr. Junta, yes. Yeah, Dr. Junta. Yeah, Dr. Junta will be doing a presentation for us. Can we go back and hear any of the uh, ones that were, you know, other presentations. Okay, my wife is asking a question. Yeah, can we hear previous presentations? Yes. In our Facebook group, yes. Yeah. Okay, because you can refer um, Michael and Marie to the to the fasting. Oh yes, we did have the fasting uh, recorded in our Facebook group too, guys. Yeah, so Don Don did a presentation on fasting, his whole fasting routine, uh, about three months ago, and so he'll be that that's also available. Facebook group. Hey, I was just wondering, do you have also that presentation that Kelly and um, or what was her husband's name? Jared. Yes, yes. it's a, it's also in the Facebook group. It's even there okay. right now. It's going live. All right. Thank yeah. you. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Have a good night, everybody. Thank you. See you on the second Tuesday in May. Until we meet again, be healthier tomorrow than you are today, every single day. Um, be, be. That's a great motto. Uh, can they uh, put up their email address again and stuff information? Okay, have a good night. Good night.